I kind of want to go back to the the blood pressure thing as well, because there was an interesting study that was recently published that made a lot of headlines on these yeah. isometric types of exercises, yeah. right? The static hold and right. being better at improving blood pressure. What What is the best exercise to improve improve blood pressure, right? Yeah. I mean, that's... So, so you know, in, when we take care of patients with hypertension, the first thing the, the community tells us to do is lifestyle modification, reduce intake of salt, reduce intake of alcohol, make sure you're getting plenty of sleep and increase exercise. And, and I will say that traditionally my approach has been that dynamic exercise is best because that causes relaxation of blood vessels. That's how you get the blood to uh, the exercising muscle. And we'll, we'll do one more little science thing, okay? Because the body has both a general alerting response as a function of the exercise presser reflex and a local response. So when I'm exercising hard, the muscles that are contracting are relaxed. Blood vessels everywhere else are contracted. It's really interesting. So if I'm running, the blood vessels in my arms are contracting as they are in my kidney and my gut. And that's why you sometimes will get catastrophic uh, uh, gut ischemia during extraordinary endurance exercise because you just don't have enough blood in your circulation to maintain your blood pressure if you've got a lot of skeletal muscle that's requiring blood. It's one thing that the, we'll call, let's call it the saltine hypothesis about the cardiovascular limitation to exercise. Because if you add arm exercise while you're doing intense leg exercise, you start to constrict the blood vessels even in the legs because you simply cannot sustain your blood pressure with all the blood vessels relaxed, even with a maximal cardiac output. So the blood, the blood vessels have to constrict, but they constrict from this general alerting increased sympathetic activity. But in the muscles, you get something called functional sympatholysis. What that means is the muscles are releasing uh, metabolites as not just from the muscle, but from the blood vessels and from the red blood cells themselves. ATP and ADP are dramatically potent vasodilators. So you get constriction in one place and dilation in another place. And it is the regular contraction, the need, the release of those metabolites, the driving of the cardiac output response that causes relaxation of the blood vessels. And that's what I want in hypertension. I want the blood vessels to be relaxed. Remember, we started this by saying blood pressure. I didn't, maybe I didn't. We talked about the Fick equation. Blood pressure is also a function of two things. Two things only, cardiac output and vascular resistance, right? We talked that cardiac output is heart rate and stroke volume. So blood pressure is the triple product of heart rate, stroke volume, and vascular resistance, with probably resistance being a, may, a very major component. So, so what I typically think is that people need to do sustained endurance activity to dilate those blood vessels, cause that relaxation, and let those blood vessels start to relax as a, the best way to reduce blood pressure. I don't know what to make about the static training study. It's just one study. It really contradicts a lot of other data in the literature. I don't think that people say, oh, let me quickly switch to um, doing planks and leg sits against the wall just because this one study showed a low blood pressure. No. For the most part, unfortunately, if you have hypertension and have already done your lifestyle modification, you're probably going to need medication to drop your blood pressure. I mean, hypertension is a cardiovascular disorder, and we've learned that you know a lot of people are going to develop it. And so I think the lifestyle stuff is the foundation. I don't think it's going to make a huge difference whether you do whether it changes my prescription for life, that remains the same. And I think having, a strong component of endurance exercise, 
but incorporating strength because that's important for life and 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 function as you get older. Um, I think all of that is really important, and it's not going to change my prescription. You know, I do have specific approaches to hypertension and physically active people, um, but I, I will remind your audience that. Uh, Many people are salt sensitive and reducing salt intake in the diet is important if you have hypertension. And maintaining a high potassium intake is also important. Um, and then watch your alcohol. Because I think sometimes doctors don't tell you that, but that too much alcohol intake is a very strong um, contributor to hypertension. And making sure you've got good sleep and don't have sleep apnea. So sleep apnea is another thing. If your spouse or partner snores, that may be one, and has hypertension, talk to a sleep doctor. That may be something that's a little easier to manage and uh, will can cause dramatic reductions in blood pressure. So al along with those, you, you think it's possible to, with lifestyle intervention, reverse hypertension? I, I think in some cases, in mild hypertension, I think that that's true. If you've got hypertension in a young person under the age of 40, I think you need to look for other causes. Um, I, I don't think we look hard enough, often enough. Uh, probably the single most important is to measure a renin and an aldosterone. Um, to look for hyperaldosteronism, production of one of the hormones that raises the blood pressure by the, the adrenal gland and the kidneys. Um, that ends up being really easy, much easier and more directed to treat. And it's grossly underdiagnosed in our country. So you should have a renin and an aldosterone level measured. There are other rare causes of hypertension. Severe hypertension in young people should get a plasma metanephrines to look for unusual tumors of the adrenal gland. But um, I, I think that garden variety essential hypertension, um, at least at its earlier stages, can well be modified by behavioral modification that we've been doing. Great, and including someone maybe in their late 60s if they perhaps do the training, the sleep, looking at the sleep, the alcohol, the alcohol. salt intake, yes. all, I, all of the things. That right? can have a huge effect.